Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev. Today we're continuing to work on our Overwatch 2D demake. Now last time we started working on phase 2 of the demake, focusing primarily on the enemy code. Unfortunately, there were a ton of roadblocks that made things pretty difficult, which ultimately required me to rewrite everything off video. But today hopefully we'll have better luck as we continue to work on the enemy code. We'll be adding a general knockback effect to the enemy units as well as expand our enemy variation. Yep, we'll be taking inspiration directly from Overwatch's Uprising event. Boy, that uh, really shows how long we've been working on this thing, huh? By introducing a small enemy unit and a big enemy unit. And of course, each enemy will have their own unique elements to them. So with that, let's not waste any more time and let's get to the coding. All right, let's do this. First, we're going to need a knock, knock back a variable, make a new alarm, go one, we reset knock. OK, we'll go ahead and set up the uh, visual effects now since it's uh, pretty simple. This is a pretty fun, fun way to do a quick flash effect for your uh, for your sprites. This is going to give our sprite that flash effect. And then if we're not in knockback state, then we turn it off. All right, so if knock, we're going to do some things else, we just do that. All righty, so if we are in knock back, we shall, uh, let's see, uh, negative one times image, oops, image X scale, not image angle. So that should be the reverse of whichever direction we're facing. Yes, I think that's right. Hopefully it's right. Okay, let's move on to getting hit by a bullet. Knock equals one. And then if we're still alive, we need to set the alarm to turn the flash off. So alarm, uh, alarm one will be five. Let's see what that does. Oh, what the? Whoa, that was weird. Hold on. How is, what is, huh? What, uh, what's going on here? Am I doing this wrong? Is this op order of operations wrong or something? No? Now granted, I haven't used this in a while, but, uh, what? You know what? I know what I did wrong. I am a fool. Uh, again, I haven't used this in a while, so I think that should work. Or not. Gosh, dang it. Okay, uh, order of operations? There you go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, well, at least it works now. Knockback is not working. Gotta figure that out next. We'll go negative 10 and see what that does. Oh, oh, hmm. Okay, we might need to keep track of this, so... Knock direction. Father X is less than... X. K dir equals negative 1. Uh, K dir equals 1. So instead of image X scale, it's K dir. So depending on which way the bullet is firing and hitting them from, should determine our knockback. Or not. Oh, well it works one way. Doesn't work the other. Okay, so... Hmm... I'm gonna toss a color on this and see what happens. I wanna see if the math is wrong or if it's truly only counting from one direction. So that's blue. Blue, blue. Red, red. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's blue. I think it's because of the projectile speed, I don't know. All right, let's try it with McCree. Hmm. See, why did that turn red? Why did that guy turn red? He was facing the same way, but he turned red. I don't understand. This is a really weird case of where I might need to just destroy all bullets in collision. It is so weird. Like I can shoot from the same direction, but it'll give it a different color. Even if I destroy all bullets as they touch, that it's it's still that's weird. That shouldn't be happening. It doesn't make any sense. If they're all facing this way when they're dropping, right? Then that means the origin of the bullets when they hit should be the same. But for some reason, sometimes it turns blue, sometimes it turns red. Actually, there is probably an easier way to determine this. Other H speed is um uh, should be greater than zero, I think. Instead of doing point of origin, just get the... There you go. Okay, that works. Oh, what the hell happened down there? What's going on down here? Is it because I changed uh, the movement speed because it was getting ridiculously dumb? Fine, I'll go back to 1. Maybe 0 0.5 is just like, I don't know what to do with these sub-pixels. 
that works. Then this works. Okay. I guess it's true that, I mean, you wouldn't get knocked back if you're going the same way that you're getting shot, right? It's too damn hot to be trying to mess with friggin' semantics over here. Ugh. Moving on. Okay, so the way that it's gonna work is all of the different enemy types that we have are gonna behave differently when they hit the bottom. So we're gonna have to cut that out from the parent entirely and put them into the uh, the enemies as we see fit. So for now, we'll turn this stuff off because we need to actually work on uh, something else for Bastion that is actually attacking. So attack chance okay so we're gonna need an event and an alarm chance zero resetting all our attack stuff okay all right so in the event we need to check for the attack chance uh let's go 50 for now we'll do a 50 50 split we'll use the same code as we use for uh players for now and alarm three equals, uh, let's see. We'll give it a second. Man, I don't know if I want to do a collision line. A collision line would be the best way to probably check for the player's position and then, you know, whether or not the, uh, the enemy should shoot. But I don't know if that'll be too much data, especially if we have a lot of enemies on screen. All right. So let's just draw a collision line. X, Y. X plus, uh, let's say, so you gotta be pretty close, so, so if we have line of sight and we are not attacking, vent user zero. All right, let's see how much that breaks. Okay, uh, huh. I think we need to be more specific here. Image X scale. Also, I just realized we're gonna need to, yeah, we're gonna need a actual enemy bullet because the enemies are shooting themselves. Cool, they're not shooting me, but if I go over here... Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so with the Bastion enemy in particular, the thing that grows with uh, every drop is damage. So for now, we haven't really set up any, you know, HP for our, our players, so it doesn't matter, but in due time. So instead of HP and speed moving up, we're just gonna increase the damage. Okay. All right, so we can do this real quick. Variations, we'll do an eight and eight for the tiny enemy. Purple thing, red, red eye. Then we need a big thing. So once again, purple thing, red eye. So we duplicate the Bastion. Then under the step, instead of a damage, this will be our speed. No need for the attacks, because this is only going to be a contact damage enemy. Probably something I didn't uh, actually specify is, uh, other than uh, the small enemy, contact damage will not be a thing for most of our enemies. So let's see if uh, that works. There they are. Woo! They're just big enough to shoot. Alright, they're moving faster. Moving faster. Now they're getting stuck, gosh dang it. They only seem to be getting stuck one way. What the heck? All right, stuck this aside, at least they work, so uh, that's good. Good base, good base to start with. And with the big boy, you get more health as you reset. I'm still contemplating if I want to add like an Orisa enemy to the game, you know, to drop like a shield so that it makes it harder to shoot enemies, but I feel like considering how many bodies there will be on screen, they all sort of act as like human, well, robotic shields anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Okay, they got three health. Wow, somebody got five. All right. <laughs> Jesus. So the way that the purple is going to work is going to work kind of like a Minecraft creeper, where if you're in the vicinity, it's going to start to charge up to explode. And then, you know, if you're still in the vicinity at the end of the countdown, then it, it explodes. So uh, that'll, uh, that'll be what we do. If distance to objects greater than or equal to let's say 30 we'll just uh, blow it up instance destroy if we're out of the vicinity then attack minus one then minus one so we don't go into negatives also 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 well uh max speed equals zero so we should stop if we are charging 
to explode. Oh, what is happening? What? What? What is? What? Uh, where are they slowly feeding? What is? What is happening? Why is it? What? <laughs> Nothing tells it to do anything with image alpha. So where is that coming from? What is happening? I don't understand this. Image alpha equals one. What is happening? Nothing tells it to go invisible. But yet here we are. It goes invisible. Maybe what's happening is it's flickering between positions. No, maybe it's flickering between Y positions. No, let's check the image alpha. It's one. I don't understand how, why is, how is this hap? I don't understand this. Maybe it's flipping, but then that wouldn't explain why it disappears. This is very weird. All right, well, after staring at this thing for way too long, I figured out it's, it's some kind of impossible math, I think, is what, what, what is happening. Ugh, can't even speak anymore. I'm just so flabbergasted at this stupid situation. So if, I'm, if I offset it, now it, it'll work. Don't tell me how I came up with the arbitrary of negative three. I just, I just kept sitting here just oh, changing the variables until it worked. I don't, uh, I don't know why that works. I mean, I never define the H speed to be three anywhere. So, whatever, that works. Good, good, good. Well, if there's one thing that this project isn't lacking, it's the unpredictable ways that I keep breaking it. Future Keaton here with the re-recording of the outro because I've actually got a new perspective I wanted to share. So uh, I'm actually not sure if I'll be continuing this project in the future. Uh, coding issues aside, I'm like starting to realize that the further I work on it, while the concept sounded cool on paper, in, in practice, uh, not so much. I mean, now granted that's the point of a prototype, which technically this is, so this is where I kind of have a decision to make. Now, I can continue through with the mashup idea and see where the end result takes us. Uh, I can repurpose what I've already done into something else, or I can just shove the idea and, you know, <laughs> appreciate the experience it brought me. Now, granted, all these options obviously have their own, you know, pros and cons, which is why I'm turning to you guys for some opinions. And just to get it out there on the table, uh, if I were to repurpose this project, I actually don't know what I'd do. Like, Overwatch in particular is designed to be like a 3D first person shooter so the options are, are kind of limited to uh, what we can do so yeah if you want to see this project continue uh, make your voice be heard is all i can really say i will consider all suggestions and uh, only time will tell what happens then but for now that'll do it for this episode of let's dev if you like this video or enjoy let's dev in general be sure to hit that like button if you aren't already subscribed be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode because youtube is silly like that and as always be sure to leave your thoughts on our progress in the comment section below thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time